normal distribution formulae. This video is about all of the formulae that you need to know for the normal distribution in the AQA statistics course, unit S1. Let's start with some population. Okay, so we've got our population and we'll assume that our population is normally distributed. Now from this population you can select either a single item or a sample. Okay, so from the population you're selecting either a single item at random or you are selecting a random sample. And then you may come across questions that say, you know, work out the probability that, or if the probability is given, work out um, a particular height of a student, or work out the interval within which 90% uh, of sample means lie, that kind of thing. Right, so if you're going to calculate a probability, okay, so the question says, work out the probability, so calculate a probability. Let's go to the formula book. On page 12 we have this formula. This is the standardizing formula when you're working with sample means. There's the sample mean right there. X with a bar over it. That's the sample mean this character represents the population mean. This is the population standard deviation and the sample size that you've taken is n here. So the standardizing formula that's given to you in the formula book is z is equal to sample mean minus population mean divided by sigma over root n. Now in this formula if you make n equal to 1, so if a single item was taken then that square root of 1 is 1. So essentially this part here becomes sigma divided by 1 which is just sigma. So then you end up with this formula z is equal to x minus population mean divided by sigma. Okay, so for samples you have x with a bar over the top representing a mean, a sample mean, and if you've selected a single item from the population then you just have the letter x in the formula. Okay, this one here is in the formula book on page 12 this one and all of the others that you're going to see here you need to memorize. Now in some questions P, the probability, is given. And if P is given then typically you're working out X here or X with the bar over the top here, the sample mean. So if you rearrange these two formulae you will get this. X is equal to population mean plus Z sigma. And for this one you will get X bar is equal to the mean, that's the population mean, plus Z times sigma over root N. You need to memorize both of these. Sometimes you have to work out the width of an interval and um, uh, the interval itself. And that's quite simple. It's just these two formulae. But where you've got the plus here and here, you have a plus, minus, plus, minus in the formulae. Okay, so... This is what you have. Plus and a minus, 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 plus and
plus and a minus. So do the calculation with the minus first to get the lower limit of the interval and then with the plus to get the upper limit of the interval and the same thing is true here. So this is where probability is given to you and you're working out um, uh, an interval. So for example, um, in which interval, so work out the interval within which 90% of student heights will lie. In which case you will be using these two formulae. This one for student heights, this one for the mean of student heights. Yeah, we're looking at sample means in this. Now, I did mention the width of an interval, and the width of an interval is just twice this value and twice this value. Okay, so the width of an interval is two times z sigma for this, and for this it's two times z sigma over root n. Now questions involving the width of an interval are quite rare. Okay, so um, uh, these don't come up that often. And lastly, for samples, you need one more formula, a very important formula that you need to memorize, and that's for confidence intervals. And this is where you're estimating the population mean using a sample mean. Again, it's an interval, hence you have the plus and the minus. So it's the sample mean plus or minus z sigma over root n. Okay, so all of these formulae need to be memorized. And the only one that's given to you in the formula book is this one here. Memorize the rest. Um, you can work them out starting with this. And then you can rearrange that to work out all of these. Um, if in this you make the x bar equal to x, and you know that if n is 1, if you've taken a single item, then this part here, the denominator there, becomes sigma, because you're just doing sigma divided by 1 there, just sigma. And then you can rearrange all of these. Now, most students find rearranging the formulae challenging, so it's better to just memorize these. 